most, most highly, highly requested video, video ever. ever. Um, yeah, don't pause on that part. I definitely didn't. Copy and paste a couple of the comments. Maybe all of them. But if you do comment on my videos, like, honestly, you're invited to my wedding that I will probably never have. I like to think that I'll find love one day, so there's that. For this thrift flip, I uh, bought a black shirt from the thrift store simply because I like the sleeves, and that's it. Like, it wasn't my size or anything like that. And, you know, I like a challenge, so why not just get something that's, like, extra, extra large, I believe? I'm normally a small. This is XXL. Both shirts. I actually did the orange one a while back and now I'm doing I'm coming back to it and doing the black one. So this is a more in-depth explanation on how to do it. But I got it from the thrift store and I liked the sleeve so much that I decided to uh, make a peasant top out of it. I think that's how you say a peasant top. I'll put like photos and such for reference of what I mean. Like not every peasant top that I've noticed is like exactly the same, but this is kind of my version of it. So I hope you like this version so you can, you know, make it as well. So let's get into it. First thing we want to do is put the shirt inside out and measure just how long we want the shirt to be. For me, I want it to be about 11 inches in length. This gives me more than enough room for seam allowance and attaching the elastic, which you will see in a bit. Grabbing the measuring tape, I carefully scoot it across the shirt, trying to keep the markings as straight as possible from one another. So I just continue marking 11 inches down on the inside of my shirt. Once you're done, create a straight line across, making sure everything is nice and even. Now we cut. This is how it looks a bit more shorter. The center of the shirt, measuring from the v-neck down, is 11 inches. Collarbone area is 14 inches. Shoulders is 14 and a half inches. And the side of the shirt came to be 13 inches. We're going to put this shirt on hold for a bit and work on the waistband with a discarded fabric. For the waistband, it is incredibly simple. All we do is overlap the two pieces, making sure the better side of the fabric is facing you. Overlapping your two pieces closes any gaps you see, making it appear like one thick seamless band. We start by sewing along the center and then seaming the top of the band. And this is how it looks finished. Now back to the shirt. And about that elastic. Yeah, it's time. Let me interrupt this really quick. So this is like super optional. You don't need the elastic. You can, um, if you don't have any elastic, then you could just sew the seams and you're done with that part. And if you don't have elastic or don't plan on buying elastic, then you can like skip to this number right here. No, okay, I'm just kidding. You can skip to this actual number right here. So I know not everyone has elastic, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you buying some because honestly it's made my DUIs so much easier ever since. I made this shirt out of elastic. Oh yeah my chest is getting red again. Yeah whatever. I'm wearing a matching two-piece right now. I'll get you a better like view of it right here. As you can see like uh, the elastic around the top the top of the skirt and the bottom of the shirt like really really do does help a lot. You could adjust it even more to make it more fitted for you and everything so i really do highly recommend the elastic and if you want to know where i got mine i'll link it down below i got it on amazon it was super cheap it was like five or six dollars and the reason why i'm using the elastic for this shirt this time is because it really it feels more fitted and secure if that makes sense i'm not sure if this is like a good explanation but it feels all nice and snug so when i put the band over it which we'll, you'll see in a bit but when I put the band over it, it feels more like it's going to stay put, you know? However, with the orange top, I didn't do elastic at all. Make note of that. So with the orange top, you could like look at it as reference as how it looks like if you just sew the seams as well. So the black shirt is with elastic, orange top without just sewing the seams and that's it. Okay, now back to the video. Place your elastic towards the end of your shirt, leaving enough room for some fabric at the bottom to cover the elastic and actually be able to go over it a bit because that area is where you're going to sew. Once you place your elastic where you want it, pin the elastic in place and you'll repeat this step till you're done covering the bottom of your shirt with the elastic. Once the ends of the elastic meet each other, in this case, it met on the front of my shirt in the center, you slip the shirt a little bit to create flaps that can cover the ends of the elastic. Now you sew above the elastic and the final product should look like this.
As you can see, all you need to do is put the strings together to however loose or tight you want the shirt to be. Then you just create a knot at the end and cut off the excess elastic. Now you can get in and out of your shirt with ease and still have it be nice and fitted. Okay, we are all done with the waist, now onto the shoulders. For the shoulders, we're going to scrunch the fabric along the seam, working with the good side of the fabric. Sewing along the seam keeps the scrunching nice and aligned. So what we will do is pinch a piece of fabric, however much is up to you and how big or small you want the flap to be, and then pinch and create another flap, leaving space in the middle. Once you have the flaps, sandwich them together. And then we repeat that same exact process for the rest of the shoulder until you run out of fabric. Okay, to start we create the two flaps and put the needle through both flaps, making sure the needle is aligned well with the seam while it reaches the other side. And then we run the needle through a couple more times to secure the flaps in place. Then we create our third flap and needle it through once. And on the second time, you're going to bring the needle through all three of the flaps and we run it through a couple of times again, then do the same thing on the second flap. As you see, it's getting a bit harder to have the needle go through the fabric as it thickens. So if that's the case, you can have the new flaps be clumped together with the last two flaps you just did, like so. Once you've reached the end, thread them all together a few times, then you're done. Just do the same exact thing to the other shoulder, and they should look like this. As you can see, it made the neckline much more wide and have the deep V be nice and prominent. Now onto the chest. With this, it's best to take extra precaution and make sure you'll be working right in the center of the shirt. Mine was about 18 and a half inches in width, so I declare the center to be nine and a half inches in. I also measured the flaps to center the top and it was about three and a half inches each side. Once you're confident it is centered, we now begin. I will be following the same steps as I did with the shoulders, working from the outside of the shirt. All we do is pinch the fabric, leave a gap, pinch the fabric again, then sew it together. We pinch the fabric one last time and make sure you run the needle through a couple of times to secure it. Now we are completely done. This is the end result and this is how it looks with the final piece being tied around the waist. All you do is position the shirt however you like. For me, I like the shirt to be a bit lower. So I tugged it on a bit and hit the bottom with my waistband. And this is the final result. I paired it with a gold necklace because I love how it looks with a deep V neckline. I know it's kind of hard to see the details on the black shirt, so here is the orange shirt for reference. Note that the orange shirt doesn't have elastic and it looks just as good. Now these are the before and after. I can't thank you enough for watching and I really hope you found this helpful and get to try this out too. See you in my next video. Whoa.